Is it a successful business plan to become a professional angler? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. So if you can do me a favor, before I get started, if you could hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. I really do appreciate it. I have a goal and this YouTube thing sucks. It's tough. There's a lot of competition out there, but I try to do things right and I try to be honest and give quality reviews. I don't throw up a lot of clickbait shit. I just keep it real. So click that sub button if you like the content. Why would someone become a professional angler? Many reasons. They enjoy the competition, they enjoy fishing, but is it really a viable way of making a great living? In my opinion, if you're joining a league that doesn't have a way like a tournament to get into it, it really isn't the top tier of bass fishing. I mean, no shade on NPFL or other places, but the opens, going through the opens to get into the elites is exactly what I think needs to happen. It brings the best of the best. How does one become a professional angler? There's many anglers that join and become co-anglers before they make that giant step into becoming a professional. Being a professional isn't exactly what it's led up to be. There are a lot of people that do make a very, very good living, but there's more of them that don't. There's only a few percentage of the people that actually are successful on the tournaments. And when you have the pay to play and anglers that are worried about getting paid when they're out there fishing or where their next check is gonna come or if they're gonna have an Enough money even to get back to their house when they have that stress on them fishing becomes not only hard but then some people do drastic things to get ahead and to win and that's a big part of the problem that is right now happening in bass fishing many anglers strive to get onto the leaps and the bpt and more than more and more fail than succeed because it's extremely tough and when you look at the back end of how much it costs per tournament and your expenses and then getting sponsors and doing it full time, then you quickly realize that there's a lot of anglers that just aren't even breaking even. Now, what are the costs that you gotta look at? Well, you have your entry fees and you have your gas, you have food, you have lodging, you have a truck payment, you have a boat payment, you have tournament expenses. So when we look at all of that versus what you possibly can make, and you're going to fail much more than you're going to succeed, this plays a big part of, is it really financially beneficial to be a professional bass angler? Because right now in this industry, it isn't. If we look at just fishing the opens, the opens are $1,800 per tournament. Now it's probably I'm going to just say some blanket statements. It doesn't mean this is 100% right. But I think on average, if you're in the opens, you probably have, you have $1,800 for your entry fee. You probably have it. I'm going to read it because it's in front of me. You're gone for five or six or seven days. Let's just say you're really good at going to McDonald's. You spend $200 for food. You have gas that probably is around the $500 range. You have lodging, which is six days, and you probably partner up with somebody else. So let's just say you stay in one of the cheapest places possible. I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt that it's 300 bucks just for that, for six days, which is 50 bucks a day, and that's, I mean, you are you might be able to find an Airbnb with a bunch of people, but let's just keep it real, $300. Then you have your truck and boat payment, which is probably another $500. And then you have your miscellaneous and tackle is probably two or $300. So right there, you're looking at $3,500, and that's being really cheap. And if you're a professional angler and just starting off, you need to be as cheap as possible, getting a, a trailer or hooking up with somebody else and cutting off, cutting costs is a good way to do it. Now you can save money and sleep in your car, but you're gonna find out it's cold in some places or it's too warm or you don't sleep properly or you're always, you're not getting a good night's sleep, which then leads you to another problem. You're not sleeping well, you're not eating well. When you get out on the boat and you're fishing, you'll be exhausted and you're not gonna fish as well as you normally would. Sleep is very important for everybody, even if you're young or keeping in shape as someone who is not in shape. Being in shape and doing exercises and stuff like that is important so that you can keep up a good day while you're out on the water because the last thing you wanna do is be stressed out, not only about how if you're gonna make it home because your bank account's low, or you're just stressed out because you're just overly tired and exhausted. And this is where sponsorships come in. And I had just did a, I did the video like three or four weeks ago. Sponsorships have a big part of where anglers are. And sponsorships are really tough to get. Really, really tough. And many anglers have said for years, work 
on your phishing first and the sponsors will come. That isn't the case anymore. You need to work on the sponsors as soon as you can. You need to work on your social media and you need to work on YouTube and all the little things to become a brand before, during, and after as a professional fisherman. Because sponsors don't come to people anymore. There was a time where people saw how well you did and sponsors came to you. That is a completely different way of life than it is right now in this industry. And uh, sponsors do not come to anglers. If you win a big tournament, yes, you might see some. But for the rest of the group that's just struggling to get through the tournament season, they're not coming to you. You need to have a media plan, a marketing plan, a plan on what you're going to do, how you're going to promote them. And you need to brand yourself and brand that sponsorship. But go check out that other video because I don't want to go through that again. But sponsors are crucial. Sponsorships are crucial. Honestly, as much as other anglers might not say this, I think it's almost the most important thing to do. Because if you have your financial stuff set ahead, and then you don't have to worry about what your checks are, I think you'll fish better. It'll take the stress off of you. But be ready to do 50, 100 emails or talk to 50 or 100 people to get one sponsor. And you'll get people that will give you free tackle. And that's great. That helps offset your tackle stuff. Take it. But remember, they're not paying you for you to do that. But go check out the other video. Let's, I digress. If you want to be a professional angler, you need to be relatable. This is something that doesn't come natural to a lot of people. You need to be self-aware. You need to know the right, your right and wrong. You need to put the right people behind you. It's not all yes people. You need someone to sometimes to tell you, no, this isn't smart. You need to learn from your mistakes. When the good is good, you need to learn from that. And when the bad is bad, you need to learn from that also. As much as it's crazy to say, you need to be slightly narcissistic. And I know people aren't going to like that. You need to make some things about you. Because if you want to succeed, your brand and everything behind you is the most important thing. Next, you need to be comfortable in front of the camera, talking to media, and you need to be confident in what you're saying. Confident in your sponsors, sell your sponsors, and you need to be unbelievably comfortable. I can only say this from 12, 13, whatever many years of doing radio. There was one angler that just couldn't talk to media at all. It was his downfall. He was very introverted, just like myself. But when a camera got in front of him, he kind of shook too much. And he had to learn how to be a pro. The pros are the, pro are the best at speaking in front of the camera and to the media. This is a good way of getting the word out on not only you, but your sponsors. But being comfortable with the, the ins and outs of the media and you as a professional angler. Be confident in yourself. Be confident in your skills. Know what you're talking about. Don't feed the media and other people a line of bullshit. Just be upfront. If you don't know something, it's all right to be right or wrong because you're going to be wrong a lot of times. But be aggressive, be confident, and get to know the media. Make them your friends. Reach out to them. Don't make them reach out to you. I have another story. I, years, years ago, I met an angler that was just starting and he was down in St. John's and I think I was one of the first people to interview, or interview him. And he had good years and then just recently he had a fantastic year. But now he doesn't know who the hell I am. And it isn't like we keep in constant contact, but be friendly to the media people. Get to know them. Get to know what they want and how to help them. Because as, as you're helping them, they're helping you get the word out on you and you become a bigger brand. Which leads us to becoming a social media pro. 10 years ago, I could have started a YouTube channel and I should have started a YouTube channel, but I was, I was stupid. That's the truth. When I was doing the radio show, I should have taken the time to not only film the stuff that I was doing with anglers and then putting it on YouTube. It would have made this life of YouTube easier. YouTube is not easy anymore. The algorithm the cha changes daily and there's so much competition in this industry for your viewing, for your view and your click. So if you're new to the industry, become a social media pro. Post every day. Post a couple times a day. Do Instagram. Do TikTok if you feel comfortable with it. But make YouTube videos also. Do Facebook. Do all of it. Do the gamut of social media. Now, also at the same time, make it quality posts. Because there's way too many people that just post the same thing promoting their sponsors. And I don't think there's anything wrong with promoting your sponsors and helping them out. 
but make it so there's some sort of substance to what you're doing. Helpful tips, ideas. Talk about something that's going on in the, in the industry. Heck, if you want a perfect thing, talk about Ford Face and Sonar and you'll get 10,000 clicks right off the bat. Talk about Randy Blackett and Ben Milliken and their feud that happens nonstop. You'll get a million views. But make it about make it not only about yourself, but make it about something that's in the industry to help yourself grow. And be ready to unfortunately not succeed. Not everyone does well. There's two, there's more people out there that are failing that are than are succeeding in the bass fishing industry. There is too many professional tournaments, and there's too many guys who think they can do what KVD and Jacob Wheeler did. And no offense. You can't. You have to be real with yourself. You need to keep it real on what your goals are. It's great to have a goal to make the class or make the elites or do all those things. But the harsh reality is, is getting into those bigger tournaments only are going to cost you more money. Unless your brand is that big, you're not going to get people to sponsor you. And that's where the stress comes in for being a professional bass fisherman. Is it a successful business plan to become a professional bass angler? That's what I need to know. That's why I want you to comment below and tell me what you think. Okay, thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.